Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Secrets to Real Estate Investing. And I am really thrilled for our guest today who's going to teach us some advanced strategies for real estate investing that are all about keeping more money in your pocket and paying less in taxes, which I'm always a huge fan of that. Our guest today is Karen Hall, who is the founder and CEO of UDirect IRA in Southern California near me. So I get to see her in person sometimes, which is a great treat. She was recently elected to the board of directors of RETA, which stands for the Retirement Industry Trust Association. And I have so much respect for her and her knowledge, and I'm so excited to have her. So welcome, Karen. Thank you, Holly. I appreciate it. Good to see your face. Yeah, we're so glad to have you. Yeah, and when you hear her say you can see your face, you can always see these videos on our website if you want to see what our fabulous guests look like, and you can get a better feel for everything when you want to see the video. But of course, the podcast on iTunes, you don't have that opportunity. So yeah, we're here on video. It's fantastic. So today we are going to talk about self-directed IRAs and the opportunities for real estate investors to utilize them. So just to start off with, um, Karen, why don't you give us a little bit of background about how you got into this job, this position, this owning this company, and um, a little bit about what self-directed IRAs are. Okay, well, I, uh, thanks first for letting me be your guest today. But the way I got into this is, is I was in real estate, uh, first property management. I managed apartment buildings in Seattle. Then I got into real estate and drove people around in my car, you know, uh, for a year. Had, had, and then I got into mortgage loan servicing. So I would, you know, the back end, we used to call it cleaning up after the elephant in mortgage lending. <laughs> right? Because it's such a test. And we graduated from that. I graduated from that on to loan origination. So I did that for a number of years. And of course, came the big, you know, meltdown. Um, and so I made the transition into self-directed IRAs for another company. And I worked there a couple of years and then transitioned into my own company, uh, which is UDirect IRA Services. And, and I tr made that transition in 2009. So since then, just been self-directing the heck out of those IRAs. You know, we do that. That's what we do every day. I love it. So for someone that has never heard this term before, I know people have heard IRA, which stands for Individual Retirement Account. I remember hearing about that when I was a young kid, but I never heard the term self-directed IRA until you know, maybe 10 years ago and I got into real estate investing myself. So why don't you define, first of all, what an IRA is and is it a tax deduction? Is it not? Is there you know, different things for that? And then what self-directed means too? Okay, well, like you said, you know, the definition of an IRA, and it's um, Gerald Ford signed the ERISA laws into effect in 1974, and they went to effect in 75, so it's been over 40 years uh, that you've been able to self-direct an IRA or, or have one at all. Uh, the point was so that individuals could save for retirement, so there are different kinds of IRAs. There's a traditional, a Roth, a SEP, a simple, even a spousal IRA or an inherited IRA. Uh, all these can be self-directed. Um, and so what they do is each, each IRA type has different uh, rules for contributing, different rules for disbursements and when you're supposed to take the money and the taxation. Um, so each one is a little bit different. Um, whether or not they're tax deductible depends on your, like your income a lot of times. So all these different account types, maybe if you're self-employed, certain IRAs are better for you, like the SEP or the simple IRA for self-employed people. The, the Roth and the, and the traditional IRA are for just anybody, really, anybody with earned income can contribute. So you can have your kids have a Roth IRA, for example, as long as they have earned income, mm -hmm. they can contribute. But there are income limits with Roths, how much, if, if you make so much, then you can't contribute. But if you're under that limit, you're okay. So these are good questions to discuss with your tax advisor, really because if you're going to deduct the money from your IRA contributions, they need to be in on it because they need to put it on there. So that's a definition of IRAs, but what makes it self-directed is the kind of asset that goes in the account. So these accounts are a traditional Roth, a SEPA simple, an inherited spousal IRA are all self-directable. The only difference with the self-directed IRA is the asset that you can put in the account. So when it's self-directed, now you've been able to do this, by the way, self-direct for 40 years as well. So mm. yeah, now you can now, now my self-directed IRA can invest with you, Holly. 
and then um, my IRA can invest with you. Maybe maybe uh, we partner together, and my IRA and you, we buy a house together. And then what would happen is maybe it was a rental property. The renters would pay my IRA 50% of the rent, you know, or whatever our pro rata split is. My IRA could also lend money to, like maybe my IRA lends you money, Holly, and you go out and you say, this is great. I'm taking this money. I'm going to buy a house, and I'm going to pay Karen Hall uh, and her IRA back the, you know, the, the amount that I borrowed for the agreements of the note that we've made. So you can make secured and unsecured notes with IRAs. You can buy performing and not performing notes. You can invest in precious metals and other things that aren't even real estate. Like, Holly, you start a company and you're going to make uh, pink hats, for example. You're going to make these pink garden hats that you love to wear. This is a company and you're like, I need to raise capital. So um, someone else's IRA can buy shares of your company and every year your company sends a K-1 to the IRA as a, as a shareholder. And the profits go back in the IRA. I love it. So many different opportunities that I think the general public isn't even necessarily so aware of. And for, fortunately for me, since um, I used to be a CPA, so I got a little early head start on knowing some of this and knew what questions to ask, I've gotten to take advantage of all that from investing in companies to actually investing in houses and mine and my husband's IRA and then also working with investors like you're talking about investing with me um, and just for the record Karin doesn't invest with me there's no uh, relationship going on here but it was just a you know potential example there and um, I would like to focus first let's talk about how people can invest their own IRA money in real estate and we can go through a few different things, but um, can they buy rental properties, which I think you kind of touched on, and, and how are the rules of that? And can they flip houses in a self-directed IRA? So let's talk about those couple things. Okay. Yeah, we have that all the time. People are always taking their IRA money to buy houses, and maybe they're going to do a buy and hold. So their IRA has to go on title. The IRA owns it, not them personally. This is something mm -hmm. we were talking about before we started this uh, recording, but if somebody is going to have their IRA buy a house, you have to make sure that, that you have an IRA first, because if the IRA is going to buy the house, the IRA has to be named as, as the purchaser, and we sign on behalf of the IRA. So first make sure you have an IRA, self-directed IRA account open and funded, um, then your IRA um, makes the offer, we sign the offer, the money goes from your IRA to escrow or however you're closing. And then you fund, you record, you get your keys, and your tenants move in, and they make their checks payable to the IRA. That's how that works. So similarly, an IRA can certainly buy and flip property, but there is a big question mark out there, like how many properties can the IRA fix or flip? And the answer is, it depends. And Holly, if you were a CPA, you know that that is often the answer with the IRS. Is the answer. It's, it's, so your IRA can certainly fix and flip properties. How many? Well, if your profession, if your job and the way you, you know, make money for your family is by fixing and flipping properties and you flip even one property in an IRA, that you can do it, but that could generate a tax called even unrelated business income tax. All right. So that's something to think about. Now, if your IRA fixes and flips lots and lots of properties every year, that can also trigger UBIT because the money you make from flipping properties is active income, as you know. And so are you an investor or are you running a business in your IRA? And the IRS would make that determination um, of whether or not you owe this uh, UBIT tax. If you want to read about it because you just love the rules, <laughs> no, maybe you do and you really want to know. So it's irs.gov, their website, and it's their publication 598. And it talks about that kind of tax. So. Uh, so there's that. So that's buying and holding, fixing and flipping. Two things to keep in mind with real estate and an IRA, super important. All expenses of the IRA, like you need a new roof, uh, you need to pay closing costs, whatever property tax bill comes due, all those expenses are paid for by the IRA. You don't write a personal check ever for your IRA owned assets. Uh, just don't do that because you don't want to commingle funds. Very bad. The other thing is, all proceeds must come back into the IRA that owns the asset. So we had somebody once with an IRA owned house and she got the rent money and then she put it into her other IRA in, you know, some other financial company. Big mistake. <laughs> the 
do that. Don't do that. The, the, all expenses are paid for by the IRA. All proceeds go back to the IRA that owns the asset. What happens if you break the rules? Does no. IRS say, because you're just saying, don't do that. Well, what happens if someone does do it? What if it's even an accident? They didn't mean to break the rules. What are the consequences? Yeah, well, you could be an angel fallen from heaven and commit a prohibited transaction and you don't get off the hook, okay? So there are these things called prohibited transactions. What happens is, I mean, worst case, is that your entire account is dispersed to you as a taxable event. So that's what happens. It's not like a crime, so it's prohibited transaction, right? But you could get tax, you know, have to pay taxes on all that, plus perhaps penalties and excise taxes and ugh, ugly. You don't want to go there. So yeah. So it wouldn't even be, for instance, if this lady made a mistake with her house. Okay, well, just that amount of that house. Say your IRA is worth a million bucks. Could your whole IRA be? Oh yes. my. Okay, Karen, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we don't want you to do this. And so that's why when, when people call us, we always talk to them, usually about 20 minute conversation to say, not just, you know, who are you? What do you, you know, what are you looking for? And so forth. we want to hear about your deal. Tell us about your deal because we, because what we're going to do is draw it out. And then usually it's at the end of the conversation. You'll say, oh yeah. And the house I'm buying is owned by my dad. Oh, sorry, you know, there are certain people disallowed to the IRA, like your lineal ascendants and descendants. Parents and grandparents and their spouses, you and your spouse, and then your children and your grandchildren and their spouses. So think of it as if you, yeah, who is going to inherit your estate? If you passed away, it would be your kids and your parents and those people. But the people who are allowed are up to the sides on the family tree, like your aunts and uncles and your cousins and your brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews, they're allowed. So your IRA can maybe, say, buy a house near a college. Your nephew can stay there while he goes to college, for example, but your son cannot. Your son is disallowed. Mm. Similarly, you've got this IRA-owned house, and it has a yard. It needs to be mowed. Well, you can send, you can send your niece or nephew out there to mow the lawn, but not your son or daughter, because your son or daughter can't provide services to the plan. A disallowed person can't provide services to the plan for free even it could be for free so like so holly say for example yeah you say you're a real estate agent or or you've got someone in your family who is they if they're like it's your mom say your mom's a real estate agent and you want your ira to buy a house your mom can't be that uh listing agent or selling agent even for free because then it's a disallowed person offering services to the plan that's bad can't do it. yeah and you may recall i asked you that question a few months ago because my children, not in an IRA, but their education savings account owned a house together, the three of them. And I thought, well, now I'm a realtor, got my license. Uh, I'm just going to list the house for them and I'll, you know, I'll do it for free. So I'm not making money. But yeah, you answered my question. No, Holly, you may not do that. So I could not do that. <laughs> well, but there's so many things you can do, you know, just a couple of little rules. But the, the reason that you self-direct your IRA at all is really two reasons. One, because you've got the money saved. What are you gonna do with it? Leave it in the stock market? I mean, and see what happens there. How much, are you an expert on the stock market? Do you feel that you like how much control you have over your assets in the stock market? Maybe not. Maybe you'd rather have it in real estate. And I know you do, so there's that. So um, so really, if you've already got the retirement money, what are you gonna do with it? You, and so the answer is you've got choices. You don't have to keep it in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. You can self-direct it into alternative assets and you have that freedom and while you have it, you know, enjoy it. So, and, and take advantage of it. I think that's a really important, important point. That's one reason to self-direct your IRA. Oh yeah, absolutely. And there's so very many detailed questions. And like I just alluded to with that question about me being the realtor, I'll say, you don't even know what you don't know and what questions to ask. So I would recommend to everybody that when they are wanting to do self-directed investing that they probably read a book on it, read up online about it, and then ask questions of their administrator, which is, you know, someone like you, if they're utilizing your company before they do anything at the beginning, like, okay, because they would say, oh, can I hire my nephew to cut the lawn? Can I hire my son to do the lawn? Can my son do the lawn for free? You just don't want to take a chance on disqualifying your I don't know if I use the right word there, disqualifying your entire account and losing yeah, it all. <laughs> good enough. I mean, yeah, you don't want a prohibited transaction. You definitely want to steer clear of them. 
that's one of the great things about having a, a company like like ours is that you can call. We do. We have staff on you know here every day, every business day, to talk to people about these things. That's our phone is ringing all the time with people asking these very questions. Hey, I'm thinking of buying this building, but I own this building next door. Can my IRA and buy this building? And the answer is. Well, are you going to get personal benefit? That's a prohibited transaction too. You're not allowed to benefit today from your IRA. Mm. Uh, personal benefit is a big deal. It's a really big deal. And I, another thing too is indirect benefit. You might think you've got all the rules, but the IRS already figured this out. <laughs> you know, so you can take your IRA money and lend it to your aunt, who then lends it to your friend who then puts the money in your personal deal that would be bad you know that, that then you would receive indirect benefit from your IRA it didn't go straight from the IRA to your deal but it went kind of around the corner to all your friends and relatives and then it went in your deal that's still a prohibited transaction it's called indirect benefit wow I never really thought about that I'm, I'm sure people think of all kinds of things to try and um... call us you know gosh don't do it until you call us because we can help well, and one little plug for you there is I love that um, unlike calling a CPA or a lawyer, there's not a charge every time, you know, someone calls you. I mean, that's included in your in your fee once they're with you. But even if they're not with you, you've been, you know, I'm sure you're great at answering questions for people too. Well, is there anything else that you want to talk about regarding, you know, me investing my money in a self-directed IRA? Anything that we kind of missed on that? Prohibited transactions are obviously that's it's kind of like a game of keep away. So you want to keep away from prohibited transactions, but you can win this game. And the way you win the game is by finding great assets and due diligence. Gosh, we have to talk about that. So if it's if it's you, Holly, going out and finding a property, it's you and the property, and there's no middleman. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're checking. Obviously, you're already going to check the title. You're going to check to make sure it's recorded, and all those things. But if you're investing your IRA money through another, uh, an intermediary, through another person, check them out. Mm. Google, Google that person's name, fraud afterwards. Were they ever incarcerated? Huh, maybe they were. Maybe you, your IRA uh, made a trust, made a lien on a piece of property. Was that lien recorded? Huh, I wonder. Because if it wasn't, that would be a problem. Um, when you're self-directing your IRA due diligence, is huge. And we have information on our site. If, if you're investing with somebody, maybe um, nationally or something, somebody you don't know personally, and there are lots of resources to check out these people and see, hey, SEC, was this person ever, you know, mm. steal money from people? That would be a big thing. <laughs> mm. And it happens. It's, I mean, I'm laughing because it, it, it's, it's sad when it happens, and we don't want it to happen to you. So do you Okay. Awesome. Great advice. And one thing I wanted to throw out there for people is they will see the title as um, when they're holding title to a house. Instead of it saying Holly McCann, it would say you direct IRA as custodian for benefit of Holly McCann IRA, something like that. Right. Custodian for the benefit of, we abbreviate that, we say FBO. So custodian for the benefit of your IRA. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah so it's going to look different and it should look different. So, okay, well, let's move on to talking about how knowing about self-directed IRAs could help me as a deal maker. When I go out and talk to people and I'm looking for private investors, and I've done this, I've, or if some people have come to me and say, hey, if you've got some self-directed IRA money that you'd like to invest in one of my deals, well, let's talk about that. So um, how can business people like me approach people and what's kind of, you know, what would they do to help people learn about it? Yeah, I get asked that question a lot. Well, what you want to do is ask people, do you have an IRA? Do you have a 401k with a previous employer? And if the answer is yes, then they have the ability to move that money from where it is into your deal. Those are the simple questions. Do you have an IRA? Do you have a 401k with a previous employer? And really to have an IRA, all you need is active income to contribute. So, uh, you know, if, if, you're, it's in, if, you're, if you have a traditional IRA, you can contribute $5,500 if you're under 50, $6,500 if you're 50 plus. So you, you want to, whatever you do, save for retirement, but people are going to be, you know, contributing and making accounts and you want to find the people with IRAs. Who are they? They're people with jobs. So it's not that tough. <laughs> they range, right? So I, I, 
you know, I think that's one of the really big things. That's how you can find those people is just ask, do you have an IRA or do you have a 401k? But overall, the entire pool of retirement funds, IRAs, 401ks, annuities, uh, defined benefit plans, all these different kinds of IRA accounts or retirement accounts in America total about $26 trillion. Wow. A lot of money. So you can tap into that just by asking. So how much money is out there? It's a lot. There's probably, I think it's today around $6.6 .6 trillion just in the IRA world. And that money is always moving around, always changing, increasing, decreasing as values go up and down. But uh, it's, a, it's a huge pool of money. That's a great opportunity when um, people are looking for funding for house flips or maybe people that, you know, say maybe I want to go out and find some rental houses, but use someone else's money that someone else could be a self-directed IRA. And then I can manage it because you know, as far as what you were talking about earlier, say I have a friend Joe here, Joe cannot be the one managing the property, the rental, if his IRA owns it, correct? There has well, to be someone else. Yeah, that's a good question. There are things you can do. So you're not going to be swinging the hammers or replacing the garbage disposal. You don't do the work because that's an over contribution of sweat equity. Okay. Right. But what you can do is you can obviously choose the property, screen the tenants, choose them. Um, you can go up there and pick up and collect that rent check. You know, here it is right in your hand and then send it off to, uh, to the self-directed IRA company. You can do that and you can hire third-party vendors to do the work. So you can kind of property manage your property a little bit. Okay. Some things. Um, but if it's anything that hands-on, like uh, like you're not, gonna, you're not gonna be going to Home Depot and buying a hot water heater with your own cash and coming, bringing it back to your property and, and selling it, that's a little hard to prove, but if you do it and the IRS sees that when they're reviewing your, like auditing you, for example, like, hmm, what's this receipt from the Home Depot, you know, and who knows how it's going to happen, right. but it's technically a prohibited transaction. Okay. But yeah, I mean, that's a good opportunity also for people. I mean, I meet people that want to invest in real estate, but they really don't want to be the one screening the tenants or be the one getting calls about it or anything. So I see an opportunity for me to partner up with somebody's IRA say, hey, I will find the property, I'll screen the tenants, I'll take the calls about the broken toilets and needing a new septic tank. Yes, that's happened to me before, that kind of stuff. And then they can just be that passive investor. I think that's really attractive to a lot of people, especially if they come from the stock market investing world where they're used to being passive. So I think there's great opportunity there. And then some people, you know, they've invested with me in, um, the form of being note holders on property, which maybe you can speak to, but you know, from my perspective, they go on title, they have a trustee, and then I send their IRA in the name of their IRA a check every month. I don't write it to my friend Susan Snow, I write it to the company, because I know if Susan Snow got the check and cashed it, that would be bad news. So you gotta be careful that you're not messing up that would on people's investments, money. right? <laughs> yeah, you no know personal, you no know constructive use of your IRA money, that's for sure. Yeah, you're right. And so, you know, we've got, you know, we've talked about how important due diligence is, and we've talked about so many uh, really great points to make. We've covered so much with self directed IRAs. Um, but mostly, again, just you, use this tool, save for retirement, no matter what you do, go out there and put money away because guess what? We're all going to get older. And when we are, Except you can help. No, I'm getting the wrinkles. <laughs> oh no, yeah, where? And then, <laughs> and then, but we're all going to get older eventually, one day. And we, you know, be your own best friend. Save for retirement. Put that money away because you may get a tax deduction for doing it. If it's in a Roth, it may grow. Ta you know, it's going to go tax free for life. And you're only going to yeah, whatever. You're not. You're only going to pay a tax when you take it out, really. So. You've got, you've, you've got this great tool. Why wouldn't you use it to the best of your ability? Amen, sister. I love it. Yeah, we have Roth IRA accounts and regular IRA accounts. And of course, we've put our most um, profitable deals that we think are going to be profitable into the Roth IRA um, accounts. It's awesome. Well, just as we wrap up here, um, my perception is probably people's best actionable item is to educate themselves more on this from both 
uh, for their own personal use of using self-directed IRA funds, as well as educating themselves so they can speak to prospective investors like I've done and say, hey, if you've got some money sitting in an account somewhere, uh, let's talk about putting that to work in real estate. So what is the best way for people and what resources do you have for them to educate themselves and educate others on this great opportunity? Lots of resources. You know, in fact, Holly, as, as, a, as a bonus for your listeners um, and your audience, I will offer to mail you an actual physical book. Remember when they were physical and you held them in your hand and you read the book, right? What's that? <laughs> I know. Um, called the Self-Directed IRA Handbook, and I'll send that to you. If you send an email to me with the word book in the subject line to khall, K-H-A-L-L, at the letter U, udirectira.com. So I'll send the book to your audience. Um, also, we've got a blog, a new blog on our website, which I'm really excited about. Great articles from, well, I've written some of them. They've been written by some other industry experts like attorneys and, and, and investment experts like yourself. Um, and also, we have on our website a free report. It's a, it's a white paper talking about self-directed investing and the different asset classes and what to watch out for. So all these different resources, you know, books to read, our blog to read, and a free report all on. Um, and you can get the free report and see the blog at udirectira.com. Fantastic. What a generous offer. I didn't even know you're going to offer a free book. That is fantastic. I'm so excited. Thank you. So we're going to have all this in our show notes so that we'll have Karen's email address where you can get the free book, links to her website, that free report. This is just one of the most exciting tax saving tools. And I mean, that's what I love about it, especially if you can take a Roth IRA and grow it tax free and pull it out without paying taxes ever. That to me is my favorite personal tax saving strategy. Love to reduce those taxes. That's so, getting the brass ring, that's for sure. Yeah, well, thank you so much. This has been really fun. and Well, fun for me, because I love to hear about tax savings. People are like, what? That's fun? It's fun to save tax money, because then you have more fun later with all the money you save, like going to Hawaii. So yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. You've been fantastic. Any final words? Again, I just will reiterate, save for retirement. It's just too important. And, and, and protect that precious money you've saved by doing your due diligence. And remember, you have the freedom to self-direct, and we're here to help. Love it. Number one, save. Number two, protect it. Because after you work so hard saving, you don't want to lose it. Play by the rules. So give Karen a call. She's super helpful. Great people at our company. Highly recommend them. And she will help you follow the rules and keep your money safe. So thank you so much. And we're signing off. Bye-bye. Thank you.